some Uncle Peter's music on. A minor blues by my uncle Peter Jenkins. Okay. Yeah, so uh, yeah, this is my uncle Peter. Love this piece of music. That's just so cool, isn't it? It's just lovely. Uh, yeah, through that mental state, doesn't it? Ah, oh, doesn't it just? Yeah. So listen, folks, it's um, it's a Tuesday morning. It's Leaders Live time, and we're just gearing up to to do our countdown as usual. Um, waiting for the live script to come up on um, LinkedIn. Here it is. Just give me a chance to. Uh, there we go. We've got that sorted. So wherever you are in the world, you know, I hope you're having a, you know, a great start to the day. This is um, we're in the UK, so it's morning time here. And if you're in other parts of the world, it might you might still be um, it might be your afternoon or your evening or your yeah, couldn't sleep at night if you're in America or whatever. So uh, wherever you are in the world, you're welcome to uh, to join us. So we've got people joining already. Fantastic. We're just counting down now. <sighs> And here we go, we're going to flip over to the scene right now. There's Nigel. Lovely, I'll just turn the music off. <laughs> You're doing not, you all right. Uh, so, listen, folks, it's a Tuesday morning here in the UK, and it's just after 8 45. And we're live, live, live. I love that 8 45, live, live, live. And we're streaming on all sorts of channels, folks. We're streaming out on LinkedIn. We're streaming out on YouTube, on two Facebook groups and Twitter. As I always say, I haven't got a clue how this slot happens, but it's just the magic of technology. And, and it could all go wrong at any minute. Who knows? This is live, baby. Um, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You know, wherever you are, welcome to this week's Leaders Live Breakfast Show. So this morning, I am joined by my friend Nigel Smith, and we're going to talk about public speaking uh, and his title of, um, well, first of all, you know, why is... Uh, why is it a useful skill to develop and how to get started? Uh, so, morning, Nigel, my friend. How are you doing? I'm really good, thanks, uh, Andrew. Excellent. Really great to be here, by the way. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, you're very welcome. Nigel's topic really got to me, actually. His headline was, Is the fear of public speaking a fate worse than death? <laughs> great title. Certainly got my attention. I don't know about you guys, but it certainly got my attention. Love that. So, uh, yeah, and look, this is a subject which is really close to my heart, actually. Um, yeah, I'm a great believer in public speaking, and uh, yeah. So, look, Nigel, I'm going to come back to you in a tick. Let me just um, let me just do a quick teaser, folks. So today we will explore why is public speaking the number one fear, feared more than death itself. Ooh, you know, in fact, you know that plane journey, you know, the fear of a plane crash. That I think that's third on the list according to Nigel. Um, public speaking is not just remembering and choosing your words, folks, um, you know, either. It's, it, Nigel argues that it's more about building a connection through body language, through trust and rapport. Um, we'll come on to all of that lot. Um, we also tease out one thing, the one thing that online presenting does that in person doesn't you know, uh, and can't do. So listen out for that. Ooh, God, I'm intrigued. And finally, you know, what have hummingbirds got in common with public speaking? I don't know, but Nigel will tell us all of that very shortly. So all this and a whole lot more in this live interview chat this morning. So if you don't know me, I'm Andrew Jenkins. Um, if you're new to Leaders Live, please say hello in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. I would certainly love to hear from Nigel as well. We'll pick up those comments. As always, folks, we love, love, love you to interact, engage and chat with us as we're going along. And especially ask us questions, folks, in the comments and we'll pick them up. Don't be shy. And smash those likes too, and the thumbs up too, folks. That you know that really helps us as we're going along. Uh, we'd really appreciate that. You know, it gives us some motivation as we're as we're moving through um, the um, this fast-paced uh, chit chat this morning. So please, please, please subscribe to Leaders Live on my all new website page as well. I'm, I'm so excited about that. And the, hit the notification bell there and on YouTube and links will all be in the descriptions. And please let me know if our audio is coming through OK too, folks. That will be helpful. Ah, so back to you again, Nigel. Um, oh, and Andy Davis says, hello, first time here this morning. Well, welcome, Andy Davis. Great to see you. So uh, let's just have a little. There's Andy Davis. So there we go. Thanks, Andy. Brilliant. Ah, back to you again, Nigel. You know, great to have you on the Leaders Live Breakfast Show. You know, my friend, let's give you a round of applause before you start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you. baby, the wonders of technology. Hey, it cost me a fortune to get that crowd sorted. So uh, normally you get applause at the end of a public. This time you get them at the beginning as well. So 
Um, quick intro for you, Nigel. Um, you're a project manager. Nigel's project manager, specialist and coach at one of Silicon Valley's fastest growing private tech companies. Um, he's also the director at Project Management Institute and a long-standing member of Toastmasters International. So, uh, so there we go. Uh, so tell us, Nigel, you know, why is public speaking an important and useful skill for us all to acquire? And why, oh, why would people want to do this? You know, if it's the number one fear, fear more than death itself. What say you, Nigel? Well, Andrew, it's because it's the <laughs> number one fear, or at least that's where I picked it up from this book in particular. <laughs> so from many, many things. Um, what I've is that seen. book, Nigel? We can't see it. It's the wrong way around for us. What does it say? I'm oh, sorry. It's called And Death Came Third. Oh, oh and death, death Came First. Oh. Peter dun, 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 wrote, dun. Death Came Third. Death came so yeah. people would rather... Um, die frankly than do public speaking and why wow. is that for me i just think that communication the art of speaking and communicating is a fundamental human skill so why right. are we all so afraid of it i why, think why? jerry jerry seinfeld said it best the u.s comedian yeah. when he said you know, if you're at a funeral you're better off in the coffin than <laughs> So, you know, and why is that? What what drives that sort of primal fear in yeah. all of this? And uh, it was certainly something that I faced uh, and took very serious only just a, a few years ago. I thought I was an average speaker. and It was only when I started to step up, I realised and was got quite humbled about how actually below average that I was. And there's some simple things you can do to make yourself into a much better presenter, both online and offline. Yeah, but it's both online and offline. That's an important point these days or, as well. Or in the room, rather. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and and you know, I, I mean, is online and you know, um, in person, you know, what what kind of? I, I know we're going to come to that later, but just very briefly, you know, what have you noticed the difference between doing online stuff and doing it in person, Nigel? Well, clearly, I can't see any of the audience, so I don't know whether they're. <laughs> paying attention I don't know whether they're interested in what I'm saying so okay. what you tend to find in the virtual world at least from my experience Andrew you've got to put a lot more energy into what you say you've got to yeah. make that that sort of energy so that people uh, you can hold their attention a lot more in a room it's easier through more eye contact and scanning the room and stuff like that but generally speaking interaction engagement involvement to grab the attention online is absolutely key okay and you've got to do more of that and you've got to be really conscious of your your energy levels and your body language and everything when you're online versus in person it's even it's even more it's even more um important i guess is that what you're saying nigel i think so absolutely okay. yeah. you have to get into that right state i love that bit of music you did at the start to get yourself <laughs> right up for all of these things all great tips to you know, stepping up and standing forward, ready to speak and present to people. Yeah, right. Yeah. And Nigel, reflecting back on your own public speaking journey, um, you know, tell us what motivated you um, to face a fate worse than death, Nigel, as you put it in your title, you know, and chose to learn to public speak. You know, why oh why? Come on, do tell. It was because it was cited as being so difficult. I thought I was good. In fact, I thought I was good. <laughs> it was actually very badly average and i mean that in the in the most possible sense of the word really yeah. i was really poor and i went to a public speaking club and i was absolutely terrified absolutely terrified i remember once and i'm only going back about three years or so sitting in the chair clasping onto the side of the chair the sort of sweat was pouring down my brain <laughs> my, my heart was beating like this and i was saying don't call my name don't call my name <laughs> and they called my name and i sort of I, I, it took me ages to walk to the front of the room, bear in mind my seat was right on the front table. Yeah. And I just looked at a sea of faces and it was like panic hit me. Yeah. And from that point forward, I just felt to myself, I've got to make myself being comfortable, being uncomfortable. I'm not going to overcome this by doing nothing. You have to take action. So what happened is I mumbled, lots of ums and ers. I was looking at the floor, looking at the ceiling for inspiration, not looking at the people in the room. Got my hands in my pockets, fidgeting around. Oh, yes. yes. Body language all over the place. My body yeah. language was probably saying, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, he feels and looks nervous. As an audience member, what should I be feeling? Well, pretty much the same. Yeah. And so from that, you know, you, you only learn by what you do and you can only improve where you see the things that you need to change. And, and I have to say, incrementally, from that point forward over the last three years, 
have improved, but I'm still learning. Still learning. I suppose we always learn. Let's um, let's just point. Let's go to the audience for a minute here. So we have Andy Davis. He says, "I have a little hobby in stand-up comedy." Ooh, yeah. I mean, that's that's a pressure. And I am one of the weird people who loves public speaking. Yeah, Andy, you are officially weird. I mean, I'm teasing you, of course. Uh, and uh, Adrian Chase, who's new as well, he says, Andy Davis, I think you are. So, <laughs> uh, well, that, that's, I would take that as a bit of encouragement. And um, Tanya says, uh, interesting here, Tanya says, another wonderful event. I was kicked out of public speaking club in high school. Probably you were too good, Tanya. Who knows? <laughs> Brilliant. So we've got some interaction going here. And yeah. Birdine says, um, Birdine Hugo, oh, this is an interesting one. So I think she's got a question here. Yes. I am glad you brought up the online aspect as I work mostly uh, only and before a webinar, I still get those nerve, those nervous butterflies. Yeah. Is this the feeling everyone experiences? What do you think, Nigel? Yes. <laughs> In short. If, if people say they're not, frankly, yeah. I don't use this word lightly, but I mm. think they're fibbing a little bit. And what I did, and right. actually it takes me back to that very first experience, Butterflies in my stomach were going absolutely crazy. And over time, I've managed to channel that from the more negative to the more positive to give me that pumped up sort of adrenaline yeah. ready to start more than anything else. I think if you talk to any performing artists that go on stage, they have exactly the same thing. I think it's absolutely natural yeah. for me. It's just how you challenge it. And just to go back to one of the comments I think you had in chat there about humour, uh, I think it's absolutely fantastic. If you've got a good sense of humour and you can choose it wisely and carefully, it's a fantastic way to get audience engagements and interaction. So if you've got that skill, hang on to it. It's a rare yeah. talent. Andy, yeah, he talks about uh, stand-up comedy here, and he's, you know, dead, dead right. A little bit of humour goes a long way. And um, what, yeah. what kind of pre, you know, these we're talking about these nerve-wracking moments of just getting yeah. on stage. And what do you do to help you? I and mean, I know opera uh, Winfrey, for example, when I watch her stuff, uh, um, and she's a, you know, obviously a consummate public speaker, brilliant at what she does, I think, and her interviews are phenomenal. You know, she goes through a routine of going, she pumps herself up <laughs> and then she goes, show time. And she kind of like, you know, punches the air, show time. And then she's on. Do you do anything like that, Nigel? <laughs> <laughs> do you do the Superman pose, for example, uh, the Superwoman only, pose? Only at weekends. <laughs> no, the, the truth of the matter is absolutely I do. And I even do yeah. it for job interviews. It's right. anyone who's seen Amy Cuddy on TED Talks. It's Dead right. Power. Poses, yeah, power pose. Deep yeah. breathing, the skull celebrations. Yeah. Absolutely. It gives you that really positive um, feeling to get started. And I don't know actually if there's any football fans out there, but um, I don't know if anybody remembers this guy, if you can see him or not. Cantona. Yeah, from the yeah. 1990s. He scored a wonderful goal. I think it was against Sunderland. And instead of just like celebrating this, the usual fashion, he just went yeah. like this, looked round. And that just epitomise coolness, preparedness, mental state of mind. Getting in the right state of mind to go public speaking is absolutely vital. So those are some of the techniques I use before I get in front of the people I'm talking to. Clearly, you don't want to go running around the room celebrating goals yeah. um, <laughs> while the audience are there. But you do want to come on in a pumped and primed, I would say, condition. I agree with you. However, I think standing like this and doing the superwoman pose or the you know the superman pose right in front of an audience, you're going to look a right plonker, right? So do it in private beforehand. I would say, would would you agree, Nigel? I would because they <laughs> might think you stand there like this. Like, <laughs> he's a bit arrogant. Absolutely, why yeah. Why you can't listen to him? Yeah. But I mean, fundamentally, it's important because as a speaker at the front of the room, yeah. whether you know it or not, you are a mirror to your audience. Yeah. Oh. So first and foremost, mirror. I mentioned a little bit earlier, if you're there a little bit like this, looking at the floor, as I say, for inspiration. They feel your look, nerves. Like, yeah. oh, nervous. Yeah. You should be worried. You know, <laughs> he's not looking good up there. But if you're projecting some form of confidence, even if yeah. you don't have it, and there's that other famous uh, Amy Cuddy saying of fake it till you make it. Till you it. make it, yeah. <laughs> but I actually would extend that and say fake it till you believe it because it is a state of mind. And what I would recommend to anyone before you stand in front of a group of people and you've done your power poses so you're all pumped and ready to go yeah. is do three things really. And I would call them SEO, okay? Right. And it's not search engine optimization. <laughs> okay. you know, I was wondering. But the... S is for your stance, stance, stand, 
Okay, okay. stance. And yes. I would encourage anybody. I mean, it's it's obvious uh, when you're in a room of people to stand. But on, Andrew, you're doing it today. I'm doing it virtually online. Standing up gives you energy. It gives you yeah. movement. It gives you better breathing. I agree. And it yeah. just makes you look that much more professional on stage. The E really is for eye contact. Now, uh, I, I'm trusting, I can't see anybody, but I'm actually not looking at you on the screen, Andrew. I'm looking straight at the camera. Yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to make eye contact with every single person in this virtual yeah. room. And eye contact is absolutely vital, as it is in real life, yeah. for connection, for rapport, and for trust. And that's probably the only way you can build it online because there is no other mechanism to do that. And the O is for openness. I've talked already about a little bit about body language. So, like you know, that. be mm. interested, be they know, head up, you know, stand firm, make good gestures, be Love and with gestures, be open. Yeah. You know, no finger pointing or palms down type stuff. Yeah. Make it really sort of inviting and open. And, and if you can do those things, and if you can c combine all that, right, yeah. remember all that, <laughs> then when you get to your position, there's, there's other things you need to do because fundamentally when you first start your speech it's more about what you don't say yeah. as opposed to what you do because body language yeah. leaks more than the words you say i think it's something like 70 percent of all communication is is non-verbal absolutely and yeah you just can hear right now it's probably more sending those signals mm. out but the the o piece yeah is about openness openness it's about sort of you know, inviting your audience in. So SEO, if yeah. um, and I stole that with pride. From, uh, <laughs> Still Murder. with pride. Yeah, I love the that. European public speaking champion. Brilliant. Let me just go to the audience for a moment. Um, yeah. So uh, we were talking about the superwoman pose and Yuri said, yeah, you look a right plonker if you do that. I think that's where that's coming from. So, And then Yuri also says here, um, the traditional public speaking is a dying breed, but that leaves space for a new breed of storytellers who are breaking all the rules. He is so right. I mean, you know, just looking at live streaming is breaking the rules of public speaking a little bit, you know, and, and the wonders of technology are helping us um, massively here. Adrian joins in here and says, um, in my youth, I played various rock bands, did hundreds of gigs. That sounds so cool. So uh, that was in a time when uh, you probably had very long hair, I'm guessing. So uh, Adrian, so uh, uh, and learned to control my nerves and wouldn't allow myself to get excited until we were um changing into our stage gear yeah i mean that whole thing about anchoring you know he's using his stage gear as a way of gearing his presence to, to get ready to go on stage i love that adrian thank you yeah. um so yeah keep the comments coming that's really interesting that um gavin says um great advice since uh taking teaching classes virtual i stand up and have created a virtual classroom uh 55 percent non verbal body language i think if you then add tone and stuff like that and tone of voice it gets even more bigger than that doesn't it gavin i think so i think seven percent is the the is the number is the words isn't it on that you know seven percent is the body is the word the rest of its body language and tone right i think if if gavin will yeah. probably correct us if we're wrong what do you do when you forget your words then nigel <laughs> Where was I, Andrew? Yeah. <laughs> where were you, indeed? Yeah. There's a number of techniques. You yeah, can I like use. that. Um, if if you're really composed, actually embrace the silence. Yeah. And just pause and just sit back and reflect and think. And whether you think it does or not, it actually exudes a bit of confidence out to the wider audience. Yeah. Or you can do well. I know what you've done, uh, Andrew, because I've heard you speak on a couple of occasions. You've stood back there and says. Where was I? Where was <laughs> Just like you did, yeah. And if you've got a room of people, even yeah. virtually, someone will pop their hand up and say, oh, Andrew, I think you were talking about X, Y, or Z. And it's so yeah. true, and they do every time. The, the audience will always help you out when you forget your words, yeah. And another another surefire technique you can, you can also use is just ask a question of the audience. <laughs> yeah. Ask them any question just to get involvement and interaction because what yeah. you want to do is build up that energy in the room. And then while that's coming back, it's actually giving you that little bit more thinking time mm -hmm. to work out where you, where you were in your... I won't call it a script because I think scripting is quite bad for speaking, but yeah. you know, you've got a running order of, of where you were coming from. That... But just, sorry, just a touch back on yeah. what you were saying a moment ago about verbal non-verbal yeah in everything that i'm sharing and everything you're sharing here this morning andrew yeah it's less about what we say 
it's not even about how we say it. Fundamentally, it's how we make people feel and what they remember Ooh, and that's nice. at the end of it. So how we you make know, people feel. Just write that down. Yeah, yeah, you can have that one. It's not mine either. I've got it from somebody else. But I think <laughs> it's absolutely true. And it's also a very good lesson for life. What makes these yeah. things memorable is not listening to me speak or talk or even yourself, Andrew. It's those vital takeaways of, I remember that because of this story. Yeah. We make them on the stories because they're quite powerful in oh, the speeches. Yeah, definitely. yeah, stories are really powerful. I, I agree. The other thing I'm forgetting your lines, I, I remember I've done this before now, is I, um, someone taught me this, is... And I would say to the audience, like, I've just forgotten my next, my, what I was going to say next. So I go, OK, so I've just forgotten what I'm going to say. And someone taught me that if I take three steps backwards, I will remember. So you take three steps backwards. And weirdly, you do remember. <laughs> you can just carry on where you left off. So, yeah, uh, yeah there are all sorts of things, aren't there, here? And it's just engagement with the audience. And, you know, actually, an audience will forgive you for that because you're just saying, no, I'm human, baby. You know, this is just the way it is, isn't it? It's, Absolutely. Um, Oh, yeah. by the way, Stuart, your friend and my friend, actually, our mutual friend, uh, Stuart Betteridge, um, is piping up here. Good morning, guys. Great to see you, Nigel. I've been privileged to see Nigel grow. Nigel, what does the future hold in relation to your public speaking? Great question, Stuart. Yeah. Oh, well, I have to say, going back with Stuart, just over two years ago, yeah. I, I put it into action with Stuart, who, and he was actually doing one of these sessions to a school. Oh, and I wow. learned so much from that, and I it took me further and further forward yeah. I, I in my local toastmasters club i'm now an area <clears throat> director for the, for the local region yeah I'm, I'm promoting what i call the inside out revolution so you can go to all these Ooh, public nice. clubs like um toastmasters and they are fantastic I, I can thoroughly recommend them the laws of efficiency say you can only get, if you put 100 percent in you can only get 100 percent out go to a toastmasters club it's 150 200 percent it's so rewarding that said you learn all these great things, but the art of doing it properly is what you do outside of the club. It's what you do in your volunteer organisations. It's what you do in your work life. It's what you yeah. do in your social life. It's how you apply it. And the good thing about going to these clubs is it's habit. You, like I said before, you put yourself in an uncomfortable place. Mm. All Safe space, though. Yeah. Safe, yeah. protected space. But get to get back to Stuart's question. Um, for me, it was really all about being district or UK and Ireland public speaking champion, which I got to wow. the semi-finals this year, all on Zoom. And there's a funny story that happened with all this. I actually had a power failure halfway through my, uh, my presentation. <laughs> Everything went down. Oh, um, yeah. Not even 4G and battery power could save me. That, <laughs> may, that, that may not have been the reason I didn't progress, but it, it was just these unexpected things that yeah. you, you can't control. You have to sort of work around and do the best you can, but there's always going to be next year or the year after. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm going out now. You mentioned before, um, Andrew, and I'm a board director on a Project Management Institute UK chapter, yeah. a regular live webinars for those guys. I'm doing a European one in a couple of weeks' wow. time. These opportunities wouldn't come to me if, I, if you don't put yourself out there. And yeah, once nice. people respect and recognize you for, for what you do and see your energy you start to get the connections and doors start to to open for you i love that i love the way you've expressed that you know you set the intention the doors start to open and that's great um gavin talks about we were just talking about body language earlier correct seven seven percent words 55 percent non-verbal language 38 percent tone pitch pace yeah fantastic thanks gavin for that little reminder um, Burdine's come up with quite a question here. Body gestures are very important. Which body gestures would you regard as the most important uh, that should be incorporated in the virtual world? And how do you know when you, uh, if you can see the audience that uh, they are intrigued or not? I think that means if you can't see the audience, how do you know they're intrigued or not? Great question, Burdine. Thank you. Uh, two part question. I'll start with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll leave I'll it on it, for you. I'll call it the Zoom box, which yeah. is this is. Really, the, we've got a bit of left and a bit of right. We've got a bit of forward. We've got a bit of backwards. <laughs> I can't take three steps back, Andrew, otherwise I'll be in, <laughs> so you've in, in the wall. I've got to remember all my lines going yeah. through. Yeah. Uh, I would say, because you've only got that very short window, it's a bit like watching TV. Yeah. Facial expressions and gestures are vitally important, as are hand gestures. But so many people on Zoom do all their gesturing off screen. And it's yeah, down here. Yeah, you need your yeah. hands up, right? And a little bit like yeah. I was mentioning before about your stance of the SEO, if people are remembering that. A lot of people tend to wobble and move. 
and do this or or this or play with yeah. the hair or whatever, Touching or the are, are looking at people on the screen as opposed to in the camera. Now, all yeah. of these things just take practice to do. They, these things do not come overnight. But as you probably aware, Andrew, because you're a fellow coach as well, awareness is the first step to make awareness. Yeah. Put action in the middle, and it's just about knowing these things and just making those tiny adjustments. But fundamentally gestures hand gestures are really really good you know you can go one two three you can you can size things what i would say is don't be over excessive in the use of it and when there's no need to do gestures don't have your hands flapping about like this for no reason just put them down by your side when you don't need them yeah and maybe you want to sort of signpost by going and there's three things you need to remember here and call it <laughs> that way that's pretty useful i love that yeah three but, things yeah yeah but, well, the rule of three is, is really uh, good in, in sort of memory for um, of presentations and speeches as well. Uh, I would say, but use that in moderation. And correct, mm. correct me on what the second part of the question was. Yeah, sure. Let me just bring it back up again. So um, there's, there's some more interaction coming along. Let's have a look at the rest of the question. Uh, and how would you know uh, if you can't see the audience and uh, if they are intrigued or not, Nigel? Ask them. Get yeah, some, get some like we're doing right now, right? So. Just yeah. You know, in fact, uh, <clears throat> the one really great tip, well, a couple of good tips I'll give you about anyone wanting to do some speaking is first and foremost, be yourself. Yeah. Um, uh, I think, uh, was it, um, I can't remember the famous author who said, be yourself because everyone else is taken. It's taken. Be, Love that. Yeah. Be genuine. Yeah. You've got your own idiosyncrasies. Just be be your own person. Be your own that. person. I love that. I think is 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 really good there. Yeah. Yeah. There's some. Um, there's a couple of things here. Um, there's some. Uh, it, Guys, you know, you listening um, and, and interacting here, you know, please give us your tips as well, what you think. Um, Yuri has come up with this. Let me just have a look at this. Uh, for video, one way to make it more engaging is just to take a couple of steps back and show more of yourself and your gestures, just like we've been doing today. Um, brilliant. Yeah, I like that. Thank you, Yuri. And um, the other one from Yuri is, oh, by the way, good morning, Syed. Great to see you as well. You haven't been on for a while, so brilliant to see you again, Syed. Um, Yuri also then says, uh, adding, adding to that, in I'll just move this out of the way. Yeah, this is an important one. You're online. Invest in better microphones um, when you take a step back. Yeah, because if you take a step back, then you're out of the range of the microphone. Yeah, you need a condensing microphone, I think is the technical term there. Um, and research your microphones. They're really complicated things, by the way. So it's not a simple fix, that one. But uh, Adrian says... Um, Let's just prop up Adrian's here. I do find it difficult to look directly into the camera, so I have put a smiley face next to the lens. What a brilliant idea, Adrian. I'm, yeah. We're all going to have smiley faces now on our cameras. I love that idea. It's interesting you say that, Andrew, because some people put mirrors above their cameras because they like looking at themselves. <laughs> or they put uh, pictures of people who they really like, which is good. That's a nice idea. Focus, um, you know, just focus that eyesight. But just going back to, uh, I think, what the person before mentioned about, you know, the studio, home studio setup. And I mean, who knew 18 months ago that we would all now need our own home studios? Yeah. So right now, I've got a screen behind me, so there's no clutter, there's no distractions, although it's mm. a little bit impersonal. I'd like something like a football shirt or something that says something about me, maybe. Not an Aston got... Villa football shirt by any chance there, Nigel. <laughs> I'll, I'll call it England. We'll have <laughs> and okay. uh, I've got I've got um, I've got one of the a Logitech Stream Cam which sits above my monitor, so that's yeah. why I get, get direct I get eye contact, eye contact yeah. directly yeah. in line. Because most people sort of look you know, on the laptops or whatever, looking into the camera there. Yeah. Make sure it's at high, high top. I've got a desk that goes up and down that makes stand. Yeah, I have too. I've got one of those here. Yeah. I've got um, one of those blue Yeti mics. I mean, other okay. great mics are available. Yeah, available the Yeti. Mark, but that yeah. is pretty good. And then lighting is super, super important. Auto, so I've got a ring yeah. light and a, I've got a light that flashes off a white ceiling and a couple of side lights. Particularly important if you've got green screens, because I think we've all messed about on Zoom with a green screen and oh, like yes. out of a horror movie because our lighting's all terrible. Mm -hmm. But so if you can get good lighting, it makes a huge, huge difference. But I do agree audio quality is probably the most important because yeah. people can probably tune into it a little bit like a podcast. I think listening is um, is key for the takeaways. But um, yeah, yeah. If, you're, if your audio's yeah. off, it's awful, isn't it? Yeah, I do agree. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for and those practical tips. Sorry, I just picked up on one thing when I was talking. Yeah. Uh, 
the one key thing I think uh, I've learned certainly over the last couple of years, Andrew, is to try and make the tone and the approach with your presentation or speech to be very conversational, almost as if you're just talking to that one other person and there might be hundreds, if not thousands out there. If you can get on that personal level of connection, you'll get some um, really good buy-in and listening from the audience. Yeah, and make that as natural as possible, right? So it's conversational. I really like that. And Nigel, when it comes to motivating and inspiring people, you know, you, as you've just said, you know, you you argue that building connection with your audience is more important than remembering your words. Um, tell us a bit more about, you know, that whole thing about motivating and inspiring people. What what kind of things do you need to look out for public speaking wise? Well, first of all, so I'll just go back to that, if you remember when I said a few moments ago, and I was sitting in that chair, clenching it, and the <laughs> yeah. butterflies were going and the heart was pounding. I actually had a script in my hand and I went to the front with it and I sort yeah. of read, wrote, and it was it was pretty good because it, it is all there, but it was not natural. It wasn't particularly engaging. I could have been on a radio. I wasn't presenting. I was just talking. Yeah. And what I've learned since then is, don't script things. It, have bullet points. Have a bit of a flow chart. Know where you're going so you can yeah. But just be natural in the middle because people, frankly, don't like perfection. I don't think, and I don't actually think perfection exists, even though I describe myself as a recovering perfectionist because I do like things. <laughs> like, which is quite odd. But I think people do look out for those elements of vulnerability that make yeah. people people an individual. And they, they're a bit forgiving in that because they're probably sitting there thinking you know going back to the inspiration thing you're talking about andrew well christ if he said his journey about where he was just three years ago and that sounded mm -hmm. pretty dire and actually do you know what death did come third but the arc of where i'm going and by the way i'm not the finished article there's, no. there's tons of, of runway for me to still uh, extend along <laughs> I like that That's possible for him what's possible for me I can do this. Yeah. That's where the inspiration bit comes from. I think the motivational aspect, I think personally, I think motivation is an inside job. I can't motivate anybody to do anything. It has to come from within. But the key thing that I like to inspire with, and again, you get it through all these public speaking clubs, is you get good quality feedback from people yeah. who you trust. They'll tell you where you're going right, what, what you're doing really well, and where you could improve. And, the, and, and the, it's always feedback, it's not failure. They'll never say, you weren't very good at this. It's never dressed up in that way at all. It's consider doing this. It could be, you could develop it a bit better if you tried X, Y, or Z. You know, so it's always done with a positive and that is that's real growth material and it just takes you to a different level. One tip here, um, folks, just that I learned along the way is um, from a friend of mine, www.ebi, um, which is what went well even better if um so and that's a really positive way of putting it you know this is what went well even better if you did xyz you know so yeah. um i just thought that was a really nice thing the other thing that i find to be really powerful i could definitely agree on the feedback piece is um but also um the belief that you know what it's going to be okay and it's not about me uh, you know there's one thing that i learned really early on well really early on sort of halfway through my journey is ah this isn't about me it's about the audience as long as the audience enjoy it and they like it then actually it's not then about me because it's not about me i'm then enjoying the fact that the audience the presupposition is the audience will enjoy you know this and, and find it useful whatever i'm going to speak about and that's vitally important because if you do think it's all about you you're not going to be particularly successful it's that's about right. their wants their yeah. needs what's in it for them but you interestingly you've just prompted me to a really famous henry ford quote that i absolutely love andrew i've probably learned it from yourself oh, it's yeah. uh, whether you think you can or whether you think you can't you're probably right yeah and either way speaks of mindset so if you're standing at the front thinking this yeah. is going to go south pretty quickly <laughs> chances are guess what gonna... it will it'll put it'll in, yeah absolutely yeah thinking on you're going to bomb but if you stand there and think yeah. i'm confident i'm confident i've got this i've got this you know it even though you've right. got a group of people out there virtually or in person mm. and they're, they're whether you like it or not they're all going to be judging you they're all going to be saying why should i listen to this you've got to win them over but if you sort of think positive say that you've got it it can help you and it's that mental preparation it's that amy cuddy 
Cuddy, Cantona, power poses. It's that preparation you do before you even get in front of camera or indeed to the front of the room. Yeah, or what um, Adrian was saying earlier that, um, where well, I can get it up now, let's just see if I can bring it up. You know, um, he would get excited when he starts to change into his stage gear when he was performing, you know, in a band, which is fantastic. So, uh, yeah. Um, and just as well, Andrew, it's symbolic mm. when you do something that gets you prepared. I mean, you got you got um, football. We talked about football a little earlier. Players that put the shirts on just before they leave the dressing room, or hit the Anfield sign just before they go out the tunnel. On, all these sort of things. And interestingly, I know it's a little bit um, uh, Tina the applause he gave at the start, but even that is a is a is a transition. It's that welcoming on the right. stage. No, yeah. it's no yours. That ownership has been transferred, but it's really sm- rather That's small, right. but very Spot powerful on. cues yeah. to get in the zone. It is, it's, it is, it is, um, you know, about mindset and the way you approach these things, even before you speak. I have to say, I love that. You know, those little cues and that, yeah, those little subtle cues and building those in. And the more you do this, the better you get at those little subtle cues, right, Nigel? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So come on then, folks, what other tips have you got or questions have you got that we can answer as we're as we're kind of um, cantering towards the um, um, we've got about 10 minutes or so left. So um, yeah, we'd love to hear from you guys, you know, um, questions and thoughts and tips that you that you guys have got. Um, now, you said at the beginning in my or I said in the teasing at the beginning, you know, you said there is one thing that online presenting does that an in-person, that doing it in-person doesn't or can't do. Do tell, Nigel, what's that about? Well, do you know what, Andrew? I'm not going to tell. <laughs> yeah. I was always told to make them, what was it, make them laugh, make them cry, make them wait. Cliffhanger. Me. Right, we're going to, yeah, okay. That's... What, what I would like to do, I'd like to ask the audience a bit, because mm. actually, and we've both touched on it several times throughout yeah. the last 30 minutes or so. I just wonder if anyone can work it out for themselves. Because, you know, as we all know, if you get told something which is is a bit of a, you know, something that's a surprise, it's, oh, it's really great, but I didn't think of it myself. But, you know, when you, like when you crack that uh, crossword clue and you write that word in, you get that real big buzz of excitement. I just wonder if anyone out there has, through what we've spoken about over the last 30 minutes, Andrew, come up with that. Just what I consider, it's my view, by the way, the one thing I think that online does better than in person. Okay, so there you go, folks. There's your challenge. And what do you think, folks? While we're doing that, because there's a bit of a delay in getting those responses, um, Adrian said this, which is quite interesting. I always bring back a moment where I was at my best and imagine a spotlight that I walk through and it always works for me. It's that kind of anchoring of a good state, right? You know, and... You know, I, I have to say, there's one thing that I do a lot of is is remember, you know, something. Why remember something that went wrong, and because that will bring back all the feelings and the sensations oh. in your body of of a negative experience. Far better to bring up a positive experience, right? You know, over time, you you know, even if you haven't got the experience in public speaking, you still bring something that makes you calm, or you know, you enjoy and remember that. Um, I remember when I was going on stage to teach the Harka in uh, Madrid to 850 people. We thought it was a world record. It wasn't. We were beaten. Uh, um, I think it was 1,200 the world record at that point. And we did the practice run. And as all practice runs, you know, it went pretty pants, actually. And I felt... Mm. And um, I remember sitting, uh, standing outside to get my breath for a little while. And I was going to be on stage in the next 10 minutes. And I thought, oh, my God, I've got this wave of fear which just came over me. And I thought, I'm not going to pull this off. Oh, what happens if it all goes wrong? What happens if the audience... And what happens and what happens? And all these what-ifs started to come up. And then I thought, hang on a minute, you know, um, what can I do to help me? And I just... Um, my co-presenter, um, he was a really calm guy, you know, and really quite, you know, nice and easy. And I just thought, you know what, his, his name was David. And I just thought I'd model him for five minutes. So I just got, I modelled what he does and I calmed myself down and I imagined walking up to stage just like he did. And you know what? Ten minutes later, I'm on stage. I'm as calm as a cucumber. I'm just like David. And David's going to introduce me. And he says, wow, you know, you've got a presence about you right now. And I said, yeah, I'm modelling you, mate. And we had a bit of a laugh about that. And then I did the harker and it went phenomenally. And all because I managed that state in that moment, just as Gavin was, um, just as uh, Adrian was saying, um, you know, managing that state is so important when you're on stage, you know, and or just before you go on stage. What say you, Nigel? 
Yeah, it's really interesting. I always look out for people that have got what I want uh, yeah. in that uh, role models, if you will. And so I, for example, uh, on TV, I will, I will watch adverts, not for what they're saying, but how they say. So how they get so much information in 30 seconds, the key messages in there, the rule of three comes in there, the big yeah. call to action at the end. I always look out for comedians as well. I know we had something before about using humor and the, the, the non-verbal behavior of comedians is phenomenal. Now, I'm not a great uh, fan of Ricky Gervais, but when I've watched some of his stand-ups, you look at him, it's more about what he doesn't say than what he does, which makes him hilarious. And his yeah. movement around the stage and his mannerisms and his gestures and his facial expressions. And those pauses, right? Yeah. 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 But um, right. if there's one thing I could signpost people today, I know that... Um, Probably half the people in the audience have got the modern iPhone. But back in January 2007, Steve Jobs arguably did the best marketing and sales presentation of all time he when he launched the iPhone. And he I would did. recommend anyone to look it out on YouTube. Yeah. Just watch the first five minutes. And in the first five minutes, you will see a phenomenal start with a great hook. You will see humor. Mm -hmm. You will see a story. You will see repetition. And these are the core ingredients that makes these sort of things engaging. Now, that entire speech was about two hours in total. But in the first five to ten minutes, yeah, he sold it, didn't he? Really great nuggets. Yeah. And the thing I really loved about it, and it's 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 not a shock today, of course, but when the iPhone first came out, Steve Jobs talked about a phone. He talked about a thousand songs in your pocket, and he talked oh, yeah. about an internet communication device. But it's not three separate devices. It's just one device. And the crowd went wild. Now, Didn't they just? Yeah. You, you have a crowd on that today. Well, 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 what else can it do? You know, can it <laughs> back in 2007, this was revolutionary. And the Wasn't way it he just... it up and sold it was phenomenal. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I would agree. I mean, Apple keynotes are brilliant to watch. Let's go to the audience now. So Gavin says, top tip. Remember to allow for breaks when delivering a long session um, and it's required more frequently when delivering virtually. Spot on, Gavin. I completely agree with that and I'm sure um, we all would do to that, but a good reminder as well. Um, Saeed said, oh, he's got a burning question. Let's get Saeed up. <clears throat> Nigel, I have a burning question. What is the optimum length video that works on LinkedIn? Is it seven minutes? Is it three minutes? Thank you. Oh, that's a good question. That's you changing know, just, all the time, that, Saeed. My answer, my honest answer is, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it depends yeah. because it depends on who your audience is and what they're expecting to hear from you, what mm. their needs and wants are. What I would say, what I sort of touch in on that question a little bit is we've talked a lot about interaction already. Whatever you do, don't talk for 10 straight minutes and yeah. then expect people to engage. Do something, I would suggest online at least, every two or three minutes, whether it be a question. I use interactive software called Mentimeter on some of my webinars, and people do it online. It's a bit like Kahoot, it's a bit like Slido. That gets the, um, a bit like polls on Zoom, I guess. It, it gets the sort of creative juices flowing from the audience. It's that interactivity, it maintains that engagement. Yeah. If you want to do a punchy um, presentation, I would say do it five minutes, but you've got to make it really entertaining. And but you haven't got much room then for interaction because interaction also takes time. But if for example, it's 20 minutes, 30 minutes or an hour, I would punctuate it every no more than three or four minutes with some form of question, poll, something that gets graphic, all... something graphic. like that. Yeah. And actually, Adri uh, sorry, Andrew, what I would suggest is the style we're doing today, which is the conversational piece, you know, the mm. sort of you're asking questions and jumping in and I'm, I'm answering and we're getting feedback from the audience. That is a fantastic way of getting engagement as well. But if you're going solo, every three or four minutes minimum, I would suggest. Brilliant. Thank you. And um, Kevin makes a statement here as well. He says virtual online delivery allows for greater audience coverage. Yeah, I teach yeah. in England, Germany, China on the same day. Yeah, I mean, totally. I get that because I'm doing exactly the same. You know, online is really working if you get it right, you know, um, and you can reach massive audiences really quickly. It just needs different different approaches. And I think the other thing about, you know, how long should things be? I think you know, we used to only a few years ago it was like well keep your videos down to 90 seconds at max you know that wow. that whole thing's changing massively with um with with uh, live feeds and uh, you know 20 30 minutes is is quite acceptable these days for live and i think if you can make it engaging <clears throat> as well andrew yeah. it's a bit like a podcast because people will listen to podcasts that's where right they do things and you can sometimes just listen to a, a webinar like a podcast because yeah. it's very conversational 
So yeah, but interestingly, just going back to that length thing, I, I didn't. I think I misunderstood the question for a, a LinkedIn video. I would say a bit like a TV commercial, absolutely the thirty or sixty seconds across. Because fundamentally, and I'm the same. I if it's too long, if it's two or three minutes, I'll tend not to watch it at all because it's yeah. too much of an investment. I think so it depends on the content, doesn't it, Nigel? You know, depending what's going on. I mean, we've we've been going now for what. Um, 35 40 minutes and we've got an engaging audience so uh, it just depends yeah. doesn't it and uh, so Nigel look we're coming we're coming ugh, we can just talk forever it's, uh, I always say this at the end we could do with a round two and it sounds like we are another round two coming up so but I haven't told you that one thing I, I know so, I know <laughs> so do tell I, I've, I've been trying to do it all the way through I have spoken about it. I think this is the only thing that's online does the number one thing in person yeah. And for me, it's about eye contact. Eye contact, eye contact gives yeah. connection. Now, when you're in a room of people, of course you can do eye contact, but you're, you know, you're scanning out for the smiley faces that you're going to. That's right, picking out people in the, the audience. Room. Yeah, you know, you're sort of, um, you know, you look into the back and, and and speaking across the room and all the rest of it. Only online can I connect with every single person that's looking back into the screen at an eye contact level. And for me, that's what gives connection and rapport. And yeah. that, I think, is absolutely vital if you want your message to, to get across. Yeah, and if you remember that, just going back to that tip about SEO, so stance, eye contact and openness, folks, um, was, the, uh, was a bit of learning from, from Nigel earlier on. So, listen, finally, Nigel, you know, what have hummingbirds got in common with public speaking? Because I, I want to know the answer to this. <laughs> okay. Well, this is really about the art of the possible, really. Okay. So, so for example, if you can, if everyone can just imagine for a second a small <clears throat> hummingbird, and they range in size from the size of a 50 pence piece to probably the size of your fist. Wow. We've all seen them on the nature programs. They're shimmering metallic plumage. Yeah. But did you know that a hummingbird their wings can flap at 80 beats per second. Not surprised, actually. Okay. And they can fly forwards, they can fly backwards, they can fly side to side, and they can mm. even fly upside down. Sounds like a helicopter. Now, if we've got any physicians or you know, scientists in the room, they would say flying upside down is impossible. Right. But here's the thing, no one told the hummingbird <laughs> and my message here today uh, really is brilliant. these things are out there for you to to go and learn and do and and the key thing about all of this is not you know there's a, there's a great saying from dale carnegie you know you can read all the books you like about swimming but sooner or later you've got to get go wet dive in. yeah dive and right. it's about diving it's about taking action and along with all of this i mean this Stuart will attest to when he saw me a couple of years ago a lot of this is all about practice yeah. pra practice practice and, makes perfect. Put, put, and, and like i mentioned about the inside out revolution um you know don't just practice it in speaking clubs get out there and do it in the wider world brilliant and, and as i started when i said that i believe that communication is a fundamental human skill you will see the difference in yourself and others will also see the difference in you as well, all for the positive. Love so I encourage people, if that's what they want, to uh, to go forth and, um, and and make it happen for yourself. Brilliant. And, you know, as Muhammad Ali said, you know, impossible is just a big word, right? So uh, I, I love that. Listen, Nigel, thank you very much indeed. And, and by the way, um, some freebies from Nigel, you know, um, I think you have a freebie offer for, um, firstly, an open invitation to anyone who wants to join Postmasters. You know, that's available to, as I said, to anybody wishing to pursue this. Simply email Nigel. I'll, put some, I'll signpost that in the description later on today. Um, and he will signpost you to the nearest branch, um, bearing in mind that actually Toastmasters is still, because the pandemic is still online currently. Um, also, um, Nigel's kindly said, look, the first five people to respond to Nigel after this Leaders Live Breakfast Show event get a free consultation to chat through their own public speaking goals with Nigel on a one-to-one -one basis so thank you very much for that generosity that'd be the first five that do that through the chat feature on uh, on this we'll use this post um th this event to do that so um uh, and I'll also put your email address there so people can get hold of you so thanks for that Nigel uh, from my side I'm founder of the CEO community called Inspired CEOs and if you're a CEO and a business owner uh, with staff then I'd love to invite you to a free two-week free 
two weeks um, to join our community of inspired CEOs and experience our game-changing conversations, our hot seats um, and our activation sessions, uh, simply contact me for a discussion. And if you're interested in, in working on high-performance teamworks, then then I would like to talk to you as well, please. Um, so please get hold of me. So quick word on Leaders Live and then what we're doing uh, next week. So um, look, I set up this Leaders Live breakfast show with a purpose to edutain and explore high-performance topics via informal fun back and forth feedback uh, back and forth conversations with interesting people just like Nigel with a mindset and a passion to help business leaders succeed in these rapidly changing times that we're living through and I do all of this because you know I believe this is important for this generation of business leaders uh, they will get success through the people factor that's my belief here and therefore Leaders Live really taps into that innate superpower of I to the power of we um, I really like that expression. Um, so, listen, folks, next week's Leaders Live uh, Breakfast Show will be on Wednesday the 29th, not Tuesday, on Wednesday. Uh, we'll flip-flop between Wednesdays and Tuesdays. And it'll be at the same time, 8.45. We have Hathi, uh, Kathy Heath, um, CEO of Healthy Minds Club, talking to us about letting go of the comfort blanket of being in a corporate role and experiencing the roller coaster ride of setting up a new business. And she set up a well-being business. So we've got all that to come with Kathy uh, next Wednesday. So I think that topic will be both useful and interesting too. And I'm looking forward to, to that and hope you will be there too. So be there or be square, folks. Um, that's a goodbye from me and a good day from Nigel. See you next week, folks. Cheers Thanks for now. Everyone. Take Cheers care. Bye-bye.